Hi guys, today I'm going to be making a video on how to change the top end on a two-stroke liquid cooled Yamaha Aerox. Uh, I'm going to be doing mine on a 2006, but this video applies from the first Aeroxes made up to the ones now in 2018, going up from the YQ50s to the NS50s. And this video will apply to most two-stroke bikes as uh, it's all the same concept as what you do when you pull the head off and pull the cylinder and the piston off. So in this video, I'll be going from the DR Racing kit back to the 50cc original out of the factory liquid cooled kit. It's completely stock. Um, reason being because the threads that you get in there for the spark plug are completely stripped on my DR70 and I'm going to be getting it helicoiled. So for the time being, I've just bought a gasket set and I'm going to be putting the 50cc back onto it. One quick thing I just wanted to add, if you are tuning it and you wanted to check your spark plug colour, uh, you keep taking your spark plug out, make sure you wait for it to cool down because that's the reason my 70s threads in there that you can see there stripped out is because I was taking it out and tightening it right back up. Spark plugs don't need to be tight as long as the gasket's being squashed enough so you don't lose any compression, uh, just to let you know because this has caused me massive problems and I didn't want the same thing to happen to people because it is a big pain. So this is my Yamaha Aerox, the one where the DR70 kit has the thread stripped out of it for the spark plug. So I'm just going to start it up and show you what it does. Because the spark plug's hanging out so there's not a lot of compression. Right, so you can see at the start where I throttled it, it bogged, and now after it was alright. Well, if I warm it up and start riding it, it won't ride at all. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you're changing your top end is you want to get on them exhaust bolts there with WD-40. That will definitely help you because these are prone for snapping where, it get, where they get so hot and cold over their lifetime. Uh, I haven't got any WD-40. I've got a can of this stuff which is called AC-90 which is liquid maintenance helps start and restore smooth running to damp engines. And so that stuff does the same thing pretty much. And then what you want to do, you've got your four cylinder bolts up on there, which we'll get to in a bit, but you want to spray all of them with WD-40 as well, because you definitely don't want any of them snapping. Stud replacement is quite a tough job sometimes. So after lubricating the bolts with WD-40 or like I said the can of AC-90 that I used you want to be removing any panels that stop you from getting the seat bucket out and the belly panel. You don't need to worry about any of the front panels, uh, just these ones in the middle here. It's also very handy to get a cup just to put your bolts in, something like that so you don't lose them or you can put them back in the exact same place they came from if you don't remember where they go and for this panel down here everybody uses screws that I've seen when they don't need any screws to support them there's supposed to be four screws in there when all you can you can just leave it in there and it pops in and out by itself just so there's no point in wasting screws on that Then all you've got to do is do the same on the other side and then drop the belly panel. So, people who are watching this video, all your belly panels are probably held on by your two screws on either side. My clip holders on the other side have snapped off, therefore that's why I'm using cable ties. So I'm just going to snip them off. And then pull them out. And then of course the same for the other side. So now if you haven't got any more screws in, like the ones on here either side or the ones at the end uh, what you want to do it just pulls down and slides down on both sides and it should drop if you've got a side stand sometimes it makes it slightly more awkward and then that's that off then next what you want to do you want to um, go in your seat unbolt that one that one that one and that one then unbolt these two for the pillion cover and underneath will be your seat latch going onto this cable here 
which will be here, one, two bolts, and then you pull it all out. Also, not forgetting that you need to pull your CDI out of its rubbers over this side and just slide that out, just like that. So when you pull the seat out, nothing bad happens to your wires and nothing gets pulled. So now you've got all them bolts out, all you've got to do is just obviously lift the seat out of the way. Now we have the carburetor and the two-stroke tank. So, I don't know if you can see, but in there, up there, by the spark plug, there is a gap between the spark plug and the cylinder head. It doesn't matter if I screw that back in, it'll just pop back out to that point and I'm losing a lot of compression. So as soon as I hit the throttle, I don't really go anywhere and sometimes it cuts out completely. Next I'm going to be taking the air box off, which you just pull this overflow tube out, tuck that away anywhere, and then you've got two screws here. I'm just going to take those out first. Sometimes they can be a bit stiff, and the factory bolts are like lead, so they, uh, they're they not very solid, so you've got to be easy with them. Use the correct bit to get them out, because sometimes they round off quite easily. It's probably worth replacing these over the time that you've got your bike. Right, so now that the airbox bolts are removed out of the side of the airbox, you want to come up here and you'll have this metal clip. Uh, a lot of people use pliers, there's no need because they're so easy. So now, you, now that's pried off of here. Now you just want to get your finger on here, or two fingers, and just pop the airbox off and it should just fall on the floor. Just like that. Now your airbox is off, and now you can see your cylinder a lot easier. So next what you want to do, you want to take your exhaust off. So coming from the exhaust manifold out of the cylinder, you've got these two bolts. For, in my case, I've got bolt and washers, spacers even, and they're going to be really rusty and they are very easy to snap. So make sure you spray them right up and leave them, I'd say for a whole day with WD-40 before you attempt to take these out because you will probably snap them into the cylinder or if you have cylinder studs, you'll probably snap the cylinder studs. And it's on. Sometimes a little tap can help it out. And by the looks of it, mine has come loose straight away without any problems. I can probably guarantee if you wasn't using WD-40 and you haven't taken these off in a while, they probably would have snapped. Another tip is, I've let down the centre stand and I've lent the bike up against the wall just so you can get to this bolt easier, the one that's closest to the transmission side. Makes it a lot easier. Right, and as that one was so hard to get on, I'm just going to give it a little bit more AC90 just to lubricate it up a little bit and hopefully, fingers crossed, it will come off clean because I do not want this stud to snap. And look at that, straight off. And as you can see there, the exhaust is now released. As such, there's a bigger gap, the exhaust is coming loose. The next thing you want to do is come over to the other side where the exhaust comes out on. This is a Yasuni exhaust, I'm not sure which one. I uh, just bought it off my pal like a couple of years ago. And for the bracket over by the water pump housing here and the state of housing, you have one bolt here and one bolt here, 13 mil. Sometimes it's easier to take off. You've got like one bolt here sometimes and then the whole thing will come off. In my case, it's easier for me to just take the whole bracket off with the exhaust. Now I've got them two bolts out there. Uh, they did need a little bit of a pull because they was really solid in there. They've been in there for a long time. And once again, can't stop saying it, AC90, WD40, something like that, lubricant for your bolts, makes them come out a hell of a lot easier if you soak them up first the night before. As soon as you pull these bolts out, the whole exhaust is just gonna drop. So I'm just gonna do that now. Just pulled the two bolts out out of that hole and that hole and the exhaust has come off just fine. Right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to undo this Jubilee clip here on your top of your water pump housing. 
that's the one that comes from the cylinder itself down in there and then when you release that coolant or water or whatever you're using uh, will come out of there and you just want to put it in like a bag. you don't want your animals uh, licking that up it'll probably make a meal and then once you've got as much water as you can out of that just like stated in my previous video of changing the radiator uh, you want to shake it about get as much as you can out and I'm going to take off the bottom pipe here and then get as much as I can out of this line that goes all the way along here uh, just for less hassle and then once your cylinder is empty you can start pulling off your cylinder head bolts that you can see there Like I said before, you just want to pick up your bike, like whilst it's on its centre stand or something like that, just give it a rock over, get as much as you can out of that cylinder because you don't want any of this going down into your crankshaft when you pull off the cylinder head and cylinder. Right, so now coming from the top tube on here, you want to follow that down and then you have another Jubilee clip under there somewhere, I have, and that goes onto the cylinder itself, so you just want to remove that. Then pull that tube off completely. So now I've pulled that pipe off and I'm just getting the last bit of coolant out. Now on the cylinder head up here, we've got one more tube. We've just got to disconnect that. And whilst you're at it, you might as well pull the HT cap off. I'm going to be replacing this. I'm going to do a separate video on it. Uh, just screw a new one on to the HT coil. But yeah, here you can definitely see how much the spark plug has popped out. It's all by itself. Doesn't matter if I screw it back in, it'll just come back out. So yeah, I'm just gonna take this Jubilee clip off now. You might want to get the jug back under there or your bowl or whatever you're using to catch the coolant because there might be some left over. And there is, of course, because that's where the thermostat is. Right, so now I'm going to take the spark plug out. I'm going to make it nice and loose because a lot of people tell you to take the cylinder head off first before you take the spark plug off but I don't advise doing that because then when you've got the head in your hand it's quite hard to get a grip on the head and get on the spark plug at the same time so I'm just going to loosen it up now it's already pretty loose where the threads have all gone on the head now the spark plug is out the next thing to do would be to crack uh, would be actually to take this temp sensor off this temp sensor is supposed to be in there, but my one's broken, so I don't need to do that. But So I'm just going to crack these four nuts now. You want to do them evenly. Um, I think quite a good tip, which I learned from Mark Savage, is just crack them halfway um, before doing them all the way, just to keep them all even. I'm going to go very, very lightly on these. And once again, I'm going to be covering them again in AC90. I'm going to get a lot, quite a lot of it on there. And these are 10mm bolts. I'm going to be really careful with these. You do not want these to snap. There's one. I'm going to go for opposite sides as well. So see I've just done this bottom corner. I'm going to go for the top corner now. There's two. I'm going to go for this bottom one here. Three. And 
and four. Right, that has gone successfully. And that is why you use bolt lubricant, because if you didn't use it, obviously, like I said earlier, it's probably likely that they would have snapped. Well, actually, what I've done here is instead of taking the nut off, I've taken the stud out of the block. So I'll have to sort that out in a minute. I've taken the entire stud out of the block by accident, but that's fine. I can just put another nut on here and hold the other nut and take this bolt off. I'm just going to take the rest out which I assume will be bolts. Yep, this one's coming out as a bolt instead of the stud. There's three. Yeah, and this one is also coming out as a stud instead of the nut, which is perfectly fine can be put back in after and there's number four so I've got my two bottom studs and then my other two studs have come out which is fine now this should gently come apart and my head isn't actually coming off where it's been on here for so long and it's got so hot or whatever it's actually sticking together so my entire cylinder's coming off with the head but if you're doing yours probably the head's going to come off first and then you'll be left with the cylinder and the piston inside the cylinder but looks like mine's coming apart as one unit which is perfectly fine once again because that can be separated after all right so i'm going to go ahead and pull my cylinder off if i can get enough room on it i probably won't because the two-stroke bottle right so here's my piston and the base gasket, and that piston is not looking healthy. It looks like there's a lot of blow by there. Right, so as you can see, I'm getting stuck on the two stroke bottle, and this is what happened last time. So there's no need to remove that or anything. What I'm just gonna do is take it off the center stand, then I'm just gonna have my brother sit on the pillion, and then obviously the whole engine will flex downwards, and I'll be able to just slide that straight off. I'm just gonna get my brother to sit on the bike now so the engine will drop. So that's come down quite a bit now and it does definitely clears the two stroke tank. I'm just gonna pull this off. Make sure your piston doesn't drop. And there's your cylinder and your cylinder head off and there's still some coolant in there. You can see it dripping. Right, so now that I've got the cylinder and cylinder head off, what you then wanna do next is come up to your piston and you've got these little circlips that are in here. Sometimes they are actual circlips and sometimes they are spring clips. In this case, they are spring clips. And you probably won't be able to do this step if you haven't got a set of long nose pliers. So what you wanna do is just go in there. You gotta grab it, just pull it out just like that. It wasn't a very good representation, so just imagine this is in the piston. You grab it and you squeeze it and then you pull it out and now, that means I can now slide that center. That means I can now slide that center pin in there, which is the gudgeon pin, out from the other side. I'm just gonna go around the other side now and do that. All right, so I'm gonna go in this side, do the same as what I did on the other side. Hopefully you can see that, so I'm gonna squeeze them. Don't always come out first try, but there, that's out now. Keep these safe as well, because these can be reused. Now the pin, pin in the middle, we can do use anything for this. Just push it out, and it'll slide out the other side. You want to probably hold on to the piston, and you don't want to push it too hard, just in case you're putting any sort of tension on the crank. For those of you wondering, I'm running a stock crank that comes from the factory. I'm just going to take the bottom end gasket off first as well, just to get that out of the way. That's the base gasket. And there's that off. I'm just going to try and push that gudgeon pin through a little bit more so I can grab it on the other side. Right, 
hopefully you can see that that's come out now. That has now popped out on this side, you can see. It's quite a tough one though. So I'm just going to get some pliers on it. You don't you want to try not to dent it or anything. Just going to slide that out. And there is your gudgeon pin. That is now out. Your piston will just pull off easy. And then you're left with your small end bearing in your crankshaft. You try not to get this, this one dirty. You want to lube this right up with two stroke when you go to put it back on. I'm just going to leave it in the crankshaft for now. Crankshaft's looking rather clean in there as well. Here's my piston. And it looks like by, by all this marking, I can tell that it's got quite a bit of blow by, so I'm gonna need to probably clean up, either get a new piston or clean this one up and get some new piston rings. So here is my old 50cc piston. Quite a lot of miles have been done on this. Uh, there's pretty much no blow by at all. So as it's just gonna be a quick run around whilst I get my 70s repaired, I'm just going to put it back in with these same rings and yeah the kit is quite in good condition. It was only a low revving kit obviously, it's a stock 50s. Um, I never put too, too much of light rollers in there, I never run it lean or anything like that. So it's quite a good condition kit, it's a nice thing to fall back on them. And I almost sold it before so I'm quite glad I didn't do that. So I will be going from this Big Bore 70s DR70 kit, Evolution kit, and here's the, just the size comparison. Now we're going back to this, you see the size difference in the bore and the piston of course. Uh, going from the back to the 50cc stock head and barrel and piston. And hopefully that will tide me over until I get this one helicoiled. And if you can see in the light there, it's like all the threads have been stripped. Right, so before you put back on your 50cc kit, you want to take off your thermostat which will be on the current kit that you're using. Uh, mine's here. I've got one screw out. I'm just having a trouble getting the second screw out. Then obviously you put it straight back into this one. Then you can put your piston, your cylinder and your head back onto the bike. Uh, before you put your 50s kit back on, what you want to do is get your small end bearing out of your crank. Make sure it's all good. And uh, absolutely soak it in two-stroke oil like I've done. Or assembly lube, whatever you prefer to use. And then your gudgeon pin also. You want to get your two-stroke. And you want to absolutely soak the thing in two stroke just helps the system like lube itself up and then I've, you want to get a C clip like I showed you before and put it in the side that you prefer like going back on uh, when your piston goes back on normally on the on here there's a arrow pointing down to go to the exhaust port but I've got so much carbon on top of mine carbon build up that you can't see the arrow so I'm gonna go just go by the ports which are on the top you want to have them on the top and you want to come in over your small end bearing you want to put your gudgeon pin in or sometimes you want to start off with your gudgeon pin in slightly making sure you've got your c-clip on the other side so the gudgeon pin doesn't go all the way through come up to your small end bearing and you want to push that all the way in just like that then once your gudgeon pin is in your piston far enough, like pushing on the other C-clip, you want to get your second C-clip, just like before, the, the reverse steps of what we've done, on your long nose pliers, and then you want to get it in, you want to make sure it's in the seat. So you just want to make sure it's fully seated in there. This one might be a bad C-clip, it's well wobbly. Yeah, I don't think I want to be using that. That will definitely pop out. Just going to for my old one. Uh, the other little C-clip wasn't tight enough, so I've decided I'm going to go for this one. I'm just going to try and get that in there now. Best way to do it is to sort of get one end in and then twist it in. Because it sort of works like a spring, these ones, where they're slightly bigger. So you want to get one end in. So now I've got the C-clip in, as you can see that one was quite tough, that's why I had to stop recording for a minute and uh, we'll go on from there. You just want to make sure that your piston is clean and your cylinder and head is clean before you go put bolting it all together. So I'm just going to be using carb cleaner, reason being because you'll score up your cylinder straight away if there's any dirt in there. But I'm just going to get some carb cleaner on there and make sure it's all clean. 
Right, so on your piston, you'll have a little pin in there, and you'll see that the piston ring, where the piston ring opens, you want to get that lined up on there. And then when you squeeze your piston ring, it should all come together up to that little um, dot thing there. And that's what you want to do when you are sliding on your cylinder. You want to make sure the piston rings are in the correct place around the little dots on the piston. Uh, so it all slides on all, all nicely and you don't mess up your bore. And then also, just like I've done with the gudgeon pin, you're going to want to absolutely cake the piston in two-stroke oil. Just to make the assembly a little bit easier. Get loads of it on there. I know it's a couple of quid or whatever for a bottle of two-stroke, but it's definitely worth it, just in case something goes wrong. Right, as well as putting two-stroke on your piston, you should, also you should put it all the way down your cylinder as well. On your concrete as well. Just to lubricate it. Then you want to come up to your piston. I've also just noticed, you just want to make sure you've got your old gasket off as well. Right, so now my piston rings are over. I can now slide the cylinder down, making sure the gasket stays all straight. And then I need to get my head. And you, you need to put your gaskets in, your, your new gaskets. Always use brand new gaskets, otherwise you might have a compression leak. Because the old ones do come out all horrible and squashed. Right, so that's the water ring there for the outside. And here's the actual head gasket for your compression. All made to fit perfectly and so it's all easy and that. Make sure they're all pushed in correctly. You don't want any bubbles popping out or anything like that. And then making sure your thermostat's on. You've blanked the water pipes uh, because you don't need carb heating. And then on with your cylinder head. Then you want to put your bolts on. And of course, my studs that I pulled out earlier by accident, instead of pulling the bolt, I pulled the stud, didn't I? I want to get your 10mm again. These don't need to go up tight. Like I said before about the spark plug, they only need to go up as tight as you think, really, and it's only just to squeeze the gasket enough, so you've got a good seal, so there's no air leaks or water leaks. First of all, you get them all tight so you can start feel that they're squeezing on the gasket. And then you want to go in a sequence to, to to torque these down. I'm not sure on the torque spec, but I've always done them just as tight as I think they should go and they've always run perfectly. So right, they're all about the same tightness now. No. Right, I'm just going to start by doing a sequence of one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just like that. I'm not gonna do them crazy tight at all. Two. Three. Four. And they don't look crazy tight, but I'm gonna go over them one more time, then that'll be plenty to hold the compression because they're only a little 50cc kit on these stock ones. Not very powerful, plenty. And go. One, two, Three, four, and that should be plenty to hold in the compression. I'm going to put the spark plug in. 
I take the little uh, the little car adapter off. Just that little adapter there, because my uh, HT cap can't go over that. Put the brand new spark plug in. I'm using a BR9 HS for this one. And they are a size 21. Like I said at the start of the video, they don't need to be crazy tight. Just enough to hold compression. They do have squash washers, so the first time you use them, you don't need to do them tight at all anyway. That should be plenty tight enough. CC kit on, spark plugs in. I've got my induction through my carburetor, of course. And uh, everything sorted. It just hasn't got an exhaust on it now. So if I kick it now, it should start. I'm just going to try. It would be really loud, so I'm going to turn it off straight away. And she started. So now that you've seen that the Aerox is running, all that you need to do is obviously put your exhaust back on, put your water pipes on. This one going from the cylinder to the top one here. And then that one that I'm pointing at right there goes on the top onto the head up there. And then this one here goes on the bottom there. And this tube is just a uh, emissions tube from the stock exhaust. Don't worry about that. Chop it off if you like. Pull it off. Pull the little box off. And then from there, obviously, you want to put your air box back on, your seat, all your panels, everything like that. And I'm going to finish the video off there. I hope the video was detailed enough for you. And I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it and comment, see what I could improve on. Thanks very much for watching.